Great group. Who's got some wisdom, huh? Bren, you got three kids, work nights. Mm -hmm. How do you and Roger do it? Very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you got Lenny and you got Roger. Mm -hmm. Last week, they wouldn't even keep my little one at daycare, ear infection. Mm -hmm. So I had to leave the salon mid-perm, rush home so I could hold the poor kid while he cries nonstop. Then the doorbell rings, and I'm thinking, that's a super. He's throwing me out. Mm -hmm. Oh, but no, it's the hunk from downstairs. Mm -hmm. He goes, now, I know you must be having a tough time, and I just want to know if there was anything I could do. And girls, he meant anything. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I pulled him inside, and I said, put eardrops in every hour. I left an 80-year-old woman under the dryer. <laughs> so odd. I guess the moral of Gloria's story is, uh, I'm not the only woman feeling like this. Things could be worse. You could be the old lady with the really frizzy perm. <laughs> <laughs> it's Dr. Delgado. This is, don't call me doctor. You call me. Lou, let's go. <laughs> Next chat room, same time tomorrow. Bring the crowd. Willis Montgomery, possible fracture of the right arm. Left arm swollen and bruised. All right, get him in exam room two. two. Uh, I just turned around like for a second. Just to I grab a diaper and he just fell off the table. Make sure he has a distal pulse. Got Lana, it. I need a left and right arm. Alright, all right, plugging it in. Pressure. 80 by pound. Alright, give me one IV. IV line okay, coming up. Boy. Okay, big boy. Right hand, left arm broken. Get it at the bounce. Miss Montgomery, has Willis had any past accidents like this before? He sprained his wrist because he slept on a rock. Oh, How old is Willis? He's eight months next week. And he's already on his second significant injury. <laughs> Miss Montgomery, did someone hit you? I bought my head when I picked him up, alright? Did the same person who hurt you hurt your baby? Baby? Willis! God, it's Raymond. No! For Chad who hit you, did he do this no. to your baby? Don't. Just don't tell him about Willis, all right? Hello? Uh, you know stop. what, sir? You know what? You're gonna have to call him no, now. No, okay. Don't tell me what to do, all right? Call the police! Right now! Hey, hey, hey! The police are on the way! Come on over here. Yeah, you sure about that? Yes, positive. Hmm. It's funny, isn't it? When I was a kid, positive was a good thing. You're not gonna die, Chloe. Not if I can help it. The genetic test that we ran on your blood only tells us you carry a mutated gene and that yes, it often causes cancer. But you said not in everyone, right? Chloe, your mother died from ovarian cancer at 39. And your twin sister. I know. I know, Dr. Stone. With that kind of family history, plus the genetic test, I'm sorry to say the odds are not in your favor. But you are lucky, Chloe. God, how can you keep a straight face and say that? Well, neither your mother nor your sister had the advantage of genetic testing. The cancer just snuck in and took over. Because you've had the test, odds are great I can stop it before it starts. You mean by cutting my ovaries out? It's called an oophorectomy. I, I know it's, it's hard to consider, but we're talking about saving your life. You know, Dr. Stone, I always thought that someday I'd meet Mr. Wright, get married, have a baby. My boyfriend and... Well, it's only been three months. I need to think about it. Of course you do. I just can't help thinking you're turning 38 on Friday. Happy birthday to me. Dr. Stowe. Uh, I'm late, Michael. Dr. Patel, over at Press, sent over a marrow transplant candidate. Oh, fine. 
Finally, number one hunter for my study, matching funds. Here I come. Her name's Mary Vitarelli. Call her right now, see if she'll come in today. If your one o'clock won't wait much longer, doctor. Says her cell phone battery's out, and she can't keep trading unless she gets back to the exchange. I'll take her one o'clock. Will you? Okay. Dana, where have you been? We've been waiting for you. Sorry, I had to recommend it correctly to a patient. It's a tough one. Well, we're on a schedule. We only have Dr. Emerson until the banquet. <laughs> Dana, let me introduce you to Dr. Dr. Lydia Emerson, of course. Dana Stowe. I met you at the Women 2K conference. Really? Uh huh. I'm already the health panel. Dr. Stowe. 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 Oh. Yeah. I'm sorry. I signed a lot of books and did a lot of panels, so forgive me if I don't recognize you. Well, not just small men is a seminal book. It's about time someone made doctors and their patients realize that what's good for the gander isn't necessarily good for the goose. We're very grateful that you've agreed to be honored at our fundraiser. Dana's giving the opening remarks. I can tell. <laughs> Been practicing. Yeah. I hope so. I don't relish facing Constance Fielding at the board meeting if this dinner doesn't go like clockwork. Oh, come on. I've given speeches at the UN. I can handle a couple of blue bloods for a little while. So, two o'clock reservation at Lebec Femme. Not for me. Lydia, please. It's not every day I have an AMA Journal centerfold walking my halls. Let me show off a little bit. You are such a flirt. Now, I can either spend the rest of the day checking the hearts of the six women who died prematurely of heart disease, or I can spend the rest of the day having lunch with you. I'll show you the lab. We'll order Chinese. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Dr. Dr. Stowe, Dana. Stowe. Mm -hmm. Dana Stowe. Mm -hmm. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Mark, I'm sorry. What are you doing? Well, I don't exactly need med school to put on a Band-Aid. Besides, if I had to wait any longer, gangrene was going to set in. What happened? Game-winning touchdown in the intersection of Mercer and 76. Your mom let you play ball on the street? She's busy. Doesn't know what I'm doing half the time. Broken home? My parents never married. Let me tell you, it's rough. Hey, can you speed it up a little? My dad's coming to pick me up, and he doesn't like to wait. There you go. You are all done. Careful. Not bad. Thanks, Ma. You got 10 bucks on you? Go ask your father, huh? Love you, honey. Miss Hawkins, your account is seriously past due. If you can't pay, Four Star Medical simply cannot continue to provide you with supplies. What is she saying? She wants to know if there's something wrong with her nine-year-old getting her period. No, only if you make her feel like something is wrong with her. Please, you have to sit down. In a moment, in a moment. And in case you haven't noticed, that sign off front does not say Mayo Clinic. Holly Pop. Lollipop. If we don't give this woman $687.31, we won't have gowns or table paper. Hey, 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 I get it. You know, you've got a job to do. Come on, Lana. You think she wants to come in here and tell us that, you know, we can't have any tongue depressors unless we pay up? Of course not. Hey, hey, you mind? But if she wants that promotion, she's got to show those bastards... Sorry. ...at the home office that she can collect from deadbeat do-gooders like us. Okay, here you go. And I want you to bring me back one, too, okay? Cool. All right. Okay, 30 more days won't break four-star medical. This is absolutely the last time. Next month, if you... You have my word. And who exactly are you? Peter Riggs, RN, midwife, herbalist, acupuncturist, foot massage master. I'm Jane. Have one of those guys give me a call. <laughs> nice going, American Gigolo. When I did stuff like that, they used to call it solicitation and throw my ass in jail. Got us off the hook. Yeah, for about 10 seconds. I've been getting calls like that for months. From the x-ray people, the lab people. You should have heard the landlord. He said, if we don't pay the back rent by Friday, we are out of here. Yeah, you think with a trillion dollar surplus, the government could find some way to renew our funding. I'm worried, Peter. Yeah, me too. Make this quick. I'm parked in the red. Uh, sorry, the valet's off today. Hey, Dad. Hey, you ready? Let's get out of here. And nice to see you too, Belle. Can't we all just get along? No, your mother doesn't know how to. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Hey, Lou. Look, I keep telling her she can't stay here. 
Clara. This isn't a shelter, okay? I've told you, you can't stay here. If you're hungry or you need some place to sleep, there's a shelter on 64th Street. Okay? Okay, Mr. Garcia, you're up. Hey, Lou. Lou, come here. No, no, Lana, Mr. Garcia's been waiting forever. No, 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 you want to see this? Over here with Dr. Louisa Delgado. Do we go to Harvard together? There's a women's clinic in South Philly. South Philly's a little off my radar, Bob. She read my interview in the Inquirer. You know, about Dr. Emerson's dinner, all the money she's helping us raise. By the way, what'd you think? Busy morning, Bob. Dana, I'm the chief of staff. Can't you even try to kiss my ass? Doctor. Doctor, can you confirm OR3 for the Simon Zuperectomy? No, patient hasn't confirmed yet. So you're releasing the OR? No, no, hold it. She will. All right, Bob, tell me your quotable quotes. Then I throw in the standard boilerplate about how Rittenhouse wants to foster stronger ties with the community. Reach out to those less fortunate and make a difference. Oh, yeah, I know you're rap. Dr. Delgado believed it. I'll be validated her parking. She's still here. She's in your office. Bob? I'm not in mental mode right now. Delgado's operation won't last a month. She wants a loan. She wants Rittenhouse to adopt your clinic. Great PR, don't you think? I'm bringing it to Mrs. Fielding and the board. Good. Good for you. Of course, I can't make a recommendation like that sight unseen. Oh, I'm Dr. Stroll. There's a Mary Vitarelli here to see you. Great. Tell her I'll be right there. I need you to go downtown into our Delgado's facility. Bob, this is a white coat. Not a green sash. Find yourself another Girl Scout. Dana, it's a women's clinic. You're our head of women's men. Who has busted her butt to find a hundred suitable patients to launch a clinical trial? And who's going to lose number 100? Mary Vitarelli, who's in my waiting room right now, because you want me to go downtown on some wild goose chase. A magic number. Congratulations. But you said you're a doctor. Yeah, but not at this hospital, though. But what do you think of clinical trials? Really, this is something you should talk to your own doctor about. Should I be doing this? Please. If I was your mother or sister, what would you tell me to do? So after you close the test subject, you'll go inspect Delgado's clinic, right? Speak of the devil, Dr. Delgado. This is Dr. Stowe. Hey. Where's my test subject? Oh, I, uh, she was just sitting here a minute ago, right next to this woman. Where'd she go? Uh, uh. I know you must be really angry with me right now, and really, who could blame you? But I just want you to know how much I appreciate you coming all the way down to see my clinic. Let's just do this, okay? Um, okay, right. Well, this is our clinic. Uh, technically, we take care of women, but women take care of everyone, so we end up treating their kids, their boyfriends, and <laughs> one lady running her chihuahua. There. Never go there again. Anyway, I am the only place in this neighborhood women can get quality care. I mean, sure, there's county, but everybody's a number over there. So. Like a bakery, personal experience. I know these women. I know their families. I grew up three blocks from here. That's why I started Chat Room, and we talk about everything. Women have a place to go. Find out they're not so alone. Peter Riggs, RN, midwife. Midwife? I realize it's a bit unorthodox for a man, midwife, are you? No, I think home birthing's dangerous. Oh, I'm on call to back up all his deliveries, Blue. so... This is our receptionist, Lana Hawkins. Welcome. Don't tell me. You're a chiropractor. Oh, uh, no. Actually, my background is in public relations. Why don't we see some patients? Hmm? Okay. Mrs. Pullman, this is Dr. Stowe. She's visiting us from Rittenhouse Hospital. Fancy. Is that why you so dressed up, Louisa? <laughs> uh, Mrs. P, listen to me. Your tests show chlamydia. Now, it's okay. The bad news is it's not something you get off a toilet seat, so Mr. Pullman's gonna have to come in. Now, Louisa, you know there is no way Arthur is gonna come up in here and admit there is anything wrong with his John Henry. Well, then, we're stuck, aren't we? Can't you just do me like Miss Schoenbaum? 
Irma Carter done told me you gave her a double dose and she mashed it up in her husband's potato. Oh, Mrs. P, you're right. Now, these pills will take care of your STD, but Arthur's and the way he got it, that's up to you. Dr. Stowe, shall we? Antibiotics and mashed potatoes? Uh -uh. You medicate a man without his consent? <laughs> Come on, you know how these old ladies... <laughs> with the gossip. Hey, Jesse. This is my colleague, Dr. Stowe. Hi. So, uh, how you doing, hmm? Okay. <clears throat> Good. Okay, let's listen to this baby's heartbeat. You been taking your vitamins? Yeah. All right. Well, everything seems fine. I wouldn't hurt you to eat a little bit more, and I'm not just talking about McDonald's. Lou, uh, can I, um, have one of those pictures? You mean a sonogram? Yeah, I, w I want to sell one to my mom. Yeah, next time. Maybe next time, by then, we'll be able to tell you if it's a boy or a girl, huh? Okay. All right, I'll see you next week. You can get dressed now, sweetie. Do you get a lot of that? Mm, everyone wants a sonogram these days. No, I mean pregnant junkies. Jessie's kicked. Plus it? On her own, and I'm really proud of her. Cold turkey. You know those are the ones most likely to fall off the wagon. <sighs> What'd the caseworker say? I, um, I haven't reported her. You know the law requires... Reporting child abuse. This isn't child abuse. Oh, no, in six months, it will be. I promised Jessie I wouldn't report her to social services. She promised me she'd stay clean. I am Look, checking... Drug addicts make lousy mothers. If the people in this community don't trust me, they don't come in. If they don't come in, they don't get well. Well, I have to question how well they can get with this standard of care. Look, this isn't Rittenhouse Square. Okay? We practice medicine a little different here. I know you're upset about losing your test subject. No, no. What you did set me back God knows how long. My study has the potential to help cure breast cancer. Yeah, in the future. What about the one woman sitting in your office today? Your treatment's experimental. You know, with that kind of thinking, we still wouldn't have the polio vaccine. Look, Dr. Stowe, listen to me. To me, medicine isn't a theory or a clinical trial that may or may not help some women five years down the road. I can't wait five years for anything. I can't wait five minutes. We don't make the rent this week. We're history. And that's not a theory. That's a fact. We'll be in touch. Damn it. You'll find another candidate for the study. Well, you know, number 23 is going to age out of it by the end of the month. Number 72 is on the fence as it is. And if I don't find another test subject right away, my study's going to fall apart. And you won't be a Nobel nominee like your father. No, and this hospital will lose its chance to make a real advance in breast cancer treatment. I'll lose my chance. You know, my brother was supposed to be the award-winning surgeon. I was supposed to go to Bryn Mawr, major in art history, and marry a doctor. You're still young. What do you want, anyway? Oh, Chloe Simons just called. She wants to see you. Oh, I hope she made the right choice. You really think she has to have her ovaries out right away? Or else it's losing another woman to cancer, and I hate losing. I'm not having the surgery. Chloe. I'm not sick. Oh, Chloe, with your family history and, and with the testing positive for the gene, you need this surgery. I don't want to be turned into a sick person. Not before I'm even sick, okay? This, this whole idea of genetic tests, I'm... You know, all you doctors, you are so excited by your new toy. But maybe we're not meant to see the future. Did you ever think of that? At least maybe I'm not. I want to get married. Have a baby. But even if you have your ovaries removed. Yes, I know there are options. Adoption, fertility science. 
But that's just not the way I dreamt of it, okay? Do you have children, Dr. Stowe? No. Do you want them? <sighs> Chloe, if you don't have this surgery, you're risking your life for a baby that doesn't even exist. And you can't understand that. Makes you crazy, doesn't it? Something you can't understand. Even with all your machines and your diplomas and genetic tests, you can't even come close to imagining how I feel right now. Well, imagine this. You could get sick in one week, tomorrow. And ovarian cancer is very hard to detect and spreads quickly. I'm afraid for you, Chloe, I am. I already know I'm going to die. Everyone is. I'm talking about how I want to live. Nadine, wait up. Hey, little guy. Hi. How you feeling, huh? Are you sleeping through the night? Mostly, yeah. Did the uh, police find your husband? Oh, he's not my husband. I'm not prison charges. Nadine, he hit you, and I'm sure not for the first time. He could have killed your baby. Look, I know you're scared. You know what, that social worker that, that you sent, uh, she said that a judge was going to fix it so that, so that Raymond could come near us, so we're safe. Everything's OK, OK? N no, no, it's not. Not pressing charges? You're not making any sense. It's like when Raymond showed up here yesterday, you said, don't tell him about Willis. What'd that even mean? He knew what he'd done. What did it mean? I, I, it's just don't tell him where Willis is. Just keep him away. That's all I wanted then. It is all I want now. And that social worker's done that. And, and that is thanks to you. So don't think they're not grateful, right? Okay? I need you to meet me tonight, huh? Why, doctor, I didn't know you came. Get Rio, Romeo. We're making a house call. The loser who broke his kid's arm. One who almost killed you. So you South understand Philly why I need you with me tonight. Absolutely. 12th and Van Ness, uh, 6 o'clock, OK? Hey, Lou. Uh, I can't. I got chat room. It's written house. Tell the girls I'll meet them in a minute. Group's finished, and the afternoon is lining up. They're not going to give us the money. Oh. The hospital feels it's a inappropriate allocation of their funds. Bastards. Yep. If there's one thing we know about Lou Delgado, it's given half the chance to open her big mouth and screw things up. Oh, she'll do it. Hey, that mouth has done a lot of good for a lot of people. Well, what about... Forget it. I've been to a dozen banks and gotten a dozen no's. And you can forget the private foundations. So, um... It's over. Peace Corps, here I come. Lana. Oh, don't worry about me. I'll find something else. Yeah, you will. You're smart. You have a better way with patients than most doctors I know. You have been an incredible friend. Oh, baby. <laughs> so what now? Well, we got sick people out there. Let's go make them better. Till Friday, anyway, yeah? Look. I'm OK. All right, Mrs. P Clara, I've told you before, this isn't a shelter. The people who come here are sick, OK? They need a doctor, not a donut or spare change. If I see you in this place again, I'm calling the police. Do you, do you hear me? Do you understand what I'm saying? Get out! Get out!
Lisa O.R. tomorrow. Chloe Simons declined her surgery. Mm -hmm. You know, where is the BUN for 515? Not back from the lab yet. You want me to call? No, I've got it. Oh. I'd like to speak to you. Oh, Dr. Degato, I just really don't I owe you time. an apology. I'm sure you didn't come to my clinic expecting to get your head bit. Yeah, it's just not why I didn't recommend the loan. It's not personal. It, it is personal to me. My mom died when I was 10. I'm very sorry. From breast cancer. You know why? She never saw a doctor. Because we had no money, no insurance. She had no place to go. Dr. Delgado. After I swore to my grandma I'd, I'd be a doctor. But to her, you know, this little Puerto Rican immigrant, how's this kid from the street with a kid of her own gonna pay for med school, right? But I got loans and scholarships, jobs. Miss Quickie from the AMP gave me her rainy day money. Practically the whole neighborhood chipped in. Felt like I owed them, you know? As soon as I finished, I opened that clinic. I appreciate what you're saying, but we practice medicine a little differently here, too. And I had to factor in our liability. That's why? Because your premiums will be jacked up? It's all about saving your own ass, huh? This ass has saved thousands of lives. Look, you want to make sure your neighbor doesn't have a heart attack? I want to eradicate heart disease completely. While you're busy hand-holding a little girl who's afraid of needles, I've testified before Congress three times on why women's health research needs more funding. I have to look at the big picture. Yeah, is anyone besides you even in that picture? Excuse me. Ladies, I am trying to work here. You, you're, you're Lenny Emerson. Yeah. I'm sorry, Dr. Emerson. Well, wait. I run the South Philly Women's Clinic. At least I will until tomorrow. We're out of money. They're going to shut us down. In your book, you say of all the doctors we got in this country, where are the ones looking out for us women? Here. You're looking at one. Dr. Delgado. Just, have you ever even been to a free clinic? You have to excuse me. You'll have to leave now. Oh, is this how you treat your patients? You know, they're not all statistics or test studies. They're each a mother or a daughter or a sister. Do you ever listen to them? Or you just shut them out the way you're doing to me? I saw your sister this morning, Mia. We ran a genetic test on Chloe. And she tested positive for the BRCA gene. So she's going to get this. Not if she has the surgery right away. And don't tell me she won't. Chloe was always a stubborn one, you know? Even when we were born, she refused to come out. Took a good 16 minutes after me. Not much has changed, has it? Now she's going to die right after me, too. I'm not letting that son of a bitch get away with hitting this kid. Battle on, Xena. <sighs> Mr. Montgomery? What are you doing here? I have nothing to say to you. Well, I got something to say to you. You may have scared Nadine into not pressing charges so the cops will forget about you, but I won't. Social Services has this restraining order slapped on you so you know, they think their job's done, but I don't. One way or another, I'm gonna check up on Willis every week, and if I see so much as a hair out of place on that kid. Oh, yeah, what, so you're gonna protect my son from me? What a joke. I never laid a hand on him. <laughs> Mr. Montgomery, you expect oh, yeah, us to believe... Yeah, look. I hit Nadine. 
All right, we were fighting, and she says to me that if I walk out the door, that Willis had better watch out now. I didn't think she would do anything. I thought she was just talking trash, you know? So when I go out and I come back, they're gone. Neighbor says that Willis is screaming and that Nadine took him down to the clinic. So I go down there and you call the cops on me. I'd like to break your arm. Hey, cool it. You're saying Nadine did it? Nadine broke Willis's arm? Yeah, yeah. Almost busted his wrist three months ago. Okay, why wouldn't you tell someone? Why did you run? You think they're ever going to believe a two-time loser tells him, uh, oh, yeah, officer, I hit her, but I never touched my son. Come on, give me a break. Hey, but you done good, though. You done real good. You seen to it that I can't get within 100 yards of my own flesh and blood. So who's going to protect him now, huh? Nadine's likely to kill him, say I done it by remote control. How the hell could you have done that? You said that I couldn't understand what you were feeling, that I wasn't in your shoes, and you were right. So I found someone who was. How could you burden my sister with this? She's dying. Yes, I know that. Don't you think that's the point? My sister is my best friend. Since before we were born, we have shared everything. And she just asked me, as a birthday present, to please not share this. She wants me to have the surgery. I'll do it. I don't know. She said, don't tell Raymond about Willis. Like, she was afraid he'd find out what she's under her son. And that baby's got to be taken away from both of them. We've got to get him into foster care, uh, Luke. OK, how? I called social services, and they said they'd check it out. But no one's going to believe Raymond. And Nadine will swear she's perfectly fit. You believe that? I don't know. Then what? I, I don't know. Dr. Delgado. Uh, I'm sorry. Unless this is an emergency, we're closed. She says it is. Uh, Lana, Peter, this is Dr. Emerson. Welcome. Big fan. Thank you. I can't thank you enough for coming all the way down here after what I said. Well, I just wanted to see what all the fuss was about. Well, there's not much fuss now, but usually there's a line right out the door. But I was late, so you missed all the excitement. Ah! What the? We got a 25 to 35 year old woman. Fully dilated. Fully dilated. Get whining. You're on a CBC. Over here. Did well with nothing. This is where I live. Start lactated ringers. <laughs> Lactate ringers, check. Keep breathing, everything's gonna be okay. I know you're scared, Clara, but just hold on. I can't believe I kicked her out. I thought she was looking for a handout. Sometimes people make mistakes. If we're lucky, we can learn from them. Rittenhouse has a very good neonatal center. They'll take them to county. Oh, no. We're taking them to Rittenhouse. Listen, I want to see you at 8 o'clock tonight at the Excelsior Hotel. Um, you know what? I, I can't. I got to pack up. 
I will see you at 8 o'clock tonight at the Excelsior. You ready? Yes, sir. All right. Delgado, we made our decision. Will you stop Stop harassing me? You invited me. And I'm so glad you could make it. I did try calling you, but your secretary said you were out. Well, she should have paged me. Yes, she probably should have. But I spent the afternoon at Dr. Delgado's clinic. I didn't kidnap her. She just came. It was an eye-opening experience. The train wrecks are fascinating. Yeah, it's got some problems. I... Shh, please. You know, you both have a great ability. You have a great ability to heal women, and you have a great ability to heal women. And you remind me so much of myself that it dawned on me you had so much to learn. So I called Constance Fielding to talk about the Rittenhouse Women's Health Center. We don't have a women's health center. You will if you can figure out how to work together. We'll merge your practice in with the clinic. All will be well. Wait a minute. But I don't... Uh, oh. Oh, okay. I get it. I, I'm sorry. I thought you were both interested in women's health. I thought you wanted to save women. Silly me. This is all about you, isn't it? Lydia, it's time for you to speak. Dana? Excuse me. Excuse me, I have to introduce a great humanitarian. Her groundbreaking research and seminal book has revolutionized women's health. I give you a medical pioneer, Dr. Lydia Emerson. Thank you, Dr. Stowe, for that very kind introduction. You know, Hippocrates took a few things for granted. Father of modern medicine and pretty much every doctor since has based their research and treatment on the 70 kilogram man. Now, obviously, you are looking at me and you're thinking, why, that's no 70 kilogram man. I'm not a 70 kilogram man. What's going on here? Well, women's hormones know what's going on. Women's bodies know what's going on. And now, doctors have to learn what's going on. They have to understand that women are not just small men. I suppose you know what she wants the hospital, what she wants me to do. So I came back to her. Damn it, Bob, you could have at least warned me. Dana, I found out just before you got here. Dr. Emerson took it straight to Mrs. Fielding and the board. Her resignation will be on your desk first thing in the morning. Dana. Why did you choose women's men? You're an amazing surgeon. You could have specialized in anything. You know why? To help women make the world a better place for womankind. Damn right. How about it's a wide open field, plenty of room for a smart, young, ambitious female doctor to rocket to the top. That never occurred to you? Lydia Emerson just gave you the biggest gift of your career, national exposure. She lectures in the most respected medical institutions in this country. You think she's not going to plug her Philadelphia story every chance she gets? Don't let your ego get in the way of your ego. Huh? Thinks his cast is a toy. Keeps it in his red line, don't you, baby? <clears throat> Nadine, I went to Raymond's today. You shouldn't have done that. What do you? He doesn't like people in his business. Don't you understand that? Yeah, I got that. But I'm not sure who has more to hide, him or you. Nadine, if you are so sick that you're hurting this child because you're trying to get back at Raymond, is that what he told you? What that I'm hurting Willis? <laughs> You can't believe that. I, I don't know what to believe. You better believe this. As morally reprehensible as it is for a father to lay a hand on his child, for a mother to, it's just beneath contempt. Now, I told Raymond this, and I'm telling you. I'm going to be on your ass. 
Don't think social services doesn't know you're as suspect as Raymond is. And don't think I'll hesitate to have this child taken away from you if he gets so much as a scratch. I want you to bring Willis by the clinic every week. Yeah, well, I heard the clinic was closing down, so... Well, you heard wrong. We're moving to Rittenhouse Hospital. Well, I can't afford that, so... Oh, yes, you can, Nadine, because it's going to be free. Nothing's changing, no excuses. I never hit my boy, all right? Yeah? Yeah. Well, someone did. That's not going to happen again. I'm scheduled a welcome breakfast for Dr. Delgado and company for 9 o'clock. I think you ought to be there. No, I can't. I've got Chloe Simon's oophorectomy. Patient in 14. All right, then we'll make it at lunch. Damn it. Dana, I'm the chief of staff. Can't you at no, least... It, not now, Bob. It's Chloe Simon's. You just don't waste any time, do you? Listen, I know you're not happy about this, but... Why should I be? I'm being forced to work with someone who practices medicine like it's triage in some war-torn banana republic, and my first patient of the day is pregnant. Excuse me, isn't this a good thing? Of course, usually. Except that this woman is an ovarian cancer time bomb, and I don't know if her baby is even going to have a mom. Listen, let's just split this up, okay? I'll take days, you take nights. Doctor, you're needed right away. There's a woman coming. All right, I'm on my way. No way I'm taking nights. <laughs> 